Here we've got a tile which extends to a frustum defined by planes A, B, C and D. As you can see, the light is fully in front of planes A and B. It's also partially in front of planes C and D. Since it's not fully behind any of the four planes, it will pass the intersection test, while it obviously doesn't intersect the frustum. That's why we see a rectangular shape in the heat map instead of a circle-shaped tile grid. As I mentioned, these false positives will waste work in the pixel shader, and the fewer we have of these, the more work we can avoid. Now consider a random frustum with a subfrustum that contains geometry. If any light intersects this volume, it will be included in the list of lights for this frustum. Typically, the difference between the minimum and maximum depth per tile is small compared to the length of the entire frustum. Therefore, we can assume that most subfrustums are also small. We can use this to approximate such a subfrustum with a box that is aligned to the coordinate axis in view space. This is called an axis aligned bounding box, which can be defined by two points. These points can be two vertices of the box with a minimum and maximum position with respect to the origin. We can also define this box using its center point and the distance of this point to the walls in each direction. Using this second representation, we can test if a sphere intersects an axis aligned bounding box. We use this function to get an exact result as to whether or not the sphere intersects the box. The code shown here is from Wicked Engine. The intersection method originates from this presentation by Gareth Thomas, where we find the same code. The intersection method appears to have been invented more than 30 years ago by someone called Arvo. As you can see, the box is not a tight fit for the subfrustum, which can result in false positives again. However, this is typically much smaller than the ones we get using frustum plane intersection testing. It gets worse when the depth range is larger, or in other words, it gets worse for longer subfrustums. To summarize the pros and cons, sphere AABB intersection yields exact results. It's computationally inexpensive and it's a good approximation for short frustums. However, as we saw in the implementation, we do need to construct a box for each subfrustum, which takes some effort. And it can result in a lot of false positives for longer frustums. All things considered, I think it's a better solution than our current implementation. So we are going to use it in our shader, right? Well, no, we won't. And that's partially because I wanted to try something new. Also, I don't like the fact that we could get a lot of false positives for long frustums. So we are going to have to invent our own method. At least I doubt that I'm the only one who ever thought of this, but I also haven't found anything like it anywhere, so who knows. Anyway, the method that we are going to use doesn't directly use tiles to construct frustums. Instead, it uses the tile size to construct a grid of circles, which then extend to cones in 3D space. So instead of a grid of frustums, we'll get a grid of cones. Now we need to intersect the bounding spheres with these cones, specifically with a truncated cone frustum with the same depth range as we calculated in the light calling shader. Wait, but how do we do that? Well, I couldn't find an exact method for sphere cone intersection testing that is cheap enough to be practical. The best I could find was this one from David Eberly, who has written books on collision detection and game physics, so he definitely knows his geometry stuff. However, this seems too expensive for our use case, so again I have to invent my own method. The bad news is that I am not as smart as Mr. Eberly. However, the good news is that I am not as smart as Mr. Eberly, and I'd like to exploit this fact to our advantage. Let's have a look at the situation. Here we have a cone and the bounding sphere for a light. The cone has a length equal to the far plane of the camera view frustum, and its base radius in view space is r. We can compute the distance of the sphere's center to the axis of the cone. We can also calculate the cone radius at the point where the sphere's center is projected onto the cone axis. 
We call this radius lowercase r. We say that the sphere intersects the cone if the distance d is less than the sum of the sphere's radius and the cone radius at the projection point. In order to derive the needed equations, let's consider the cone axis with length d and the sphere. The position vector of the sphere is denoted by s. We start by projecting the sphere's center onto vector d. This is a simple dot product which returns a scalar value multiplied by the direction of d. We can calculate the rejection of sphere's center by subtracting the projection vector from the sphere's center position. The length of the resulting vector is the distance d. Next, we need to calculate the cone radius at point p. We can use similar triangles for this, which states that the ratio of r and distance p is the same as the ratio of cone base radius and the far plane. We can use this to calculate r. Now we have everything we need to determine if the sphere and the cone intersect. However, as I mentioned, I got this result by being a dum-dum, and it means that it's pretty much wrong. At least the math is correct, but the condition for intersection is wrong. And we can see this if we look more closely at the sphere that just touches the cone mantle. You see, the sphere doesn't touch the cone at the point right above the projection of the sphere center. It does so at the point that's perpendicular to the cone's mantle. And the difference is determined by the cone angle. So it's easy to see that the wider the cone is, the more this point deviates from what we had in mind. All is not lost though, because if we replace the word wrong with approximation, we can try and see if it's a good enough approximation. And I think it is for the following reasons. The cone angle for frustums is typically small. Therefore, the error in approximation is also really small. In addition, the cone is already a loose fit for the actual tile frustum, except for the corners. So we'd get false positives sooner than false negatives. And even for this corner case, pun totally intended, if the intersection would just fail, it would hardly be noticeable, because it happens at the very limits of the light's range where the intensity is near zero. That's of course unless we are doing some unrealistic lighting where the lights abruptly end, 